What's going on, Canadian Vapors? I'm Analog Dan, and for this week's DIY post, uh, we're going to talk about soldering, some tips and tricks that I learned along the way. Uh, one comment I get a lot uh, in people building their own DIY box mod is, uh, I can't do it, I'm no good at soldering, I don't know how to solder. Well, I was no good at it too for a long time and there's really three or four things you can do that is going to change your soldering game and make it a whole lot uh, easier. Let me solder something here that when I got started I was messing with LEDs. We have a little LED strip here and this is something I struggle with that I couldn't do um, and you'll see how easy I'm going to do it now and then we'll talk about why it uh, can be this easy. Um, this is some flux. I'm going to add a tiny little dab on the two copper contacts here that I'm going to solder to. I don't want to burn that paper that it's on, so I'll use something over top there. I'm going to apply a tiny dab of solder to those little contacts. Just like that. We're going to strip some wire here. Those are small contacts there. I'm going to tin the wire. See in a sec what that means here. I'm applying a tiny bit of flux to the wire. Get some solder. I don't know if you can see that right, but the strands just soak up the solder. attach this lead to the terminal on the left there. See that piece of cake, solid and now for those tips and why this was a piece of cake. Um, when I started and I was soldering something, these LEDs for example, um, I think one problem everyone has is you need to hold your iron, you need to hold the piece that's being soldered, maybe you throw a weight down on it, and you need to somehow uh, get some solder now mine's on a spool, but for argument's sake, let's say you had, you know, you're, you're running out of hands here um, to try and accomplish this. And a big part of successful soldering is, is being in a comfortable position. And we'll see later when we use the helping hand, resting your hand on something, having the component um, in an area where this hand's resting, so is this one. If, if your hand's up in the air, you'll You'll get the wiggles and it's hard to be precise with it. So the, the reason the other side was so easy is, first thing, you don't have an extra hand to hold the solder to. So solder needs to stick to the uh, iron. Uh, it's called loading, loading up the iron. Um, if you notice here, I don't know how easy that is to see, but there's a big gob of solder on the iron there. Um, and then you, you paint that on, you hit the, the component you're uh, soldering. And then another uh, reason that's important is, uh, some of you might be familiar with uh, soldering copper pipes, and the technique there is you, you heat the pipe, the pipe needs to get hot enough 
to melt the solder. You're not using the torch to melt the solder. You heat the pipe until it reaches a point where touching the solder to it's going to melt it. For electronics, we most of the time can't do that. If we're talking about wire, we're going to melt the um, insulation on the wire long before the metal gets hot enough to, to melt the wire. A lot of other electronic components you'll, you'll destroy by bringing them up to that kind of heat. Um, so for electronics, we're not heating the part. Um, the nice thing about having the solder stick to your iron is that liquid solder that's on there is already at, at temperature. If I was holding a piece of solder and again here am I melting the solder then so the solder that's on here is at the temperature we need to get flat there. Boom! You just tap it on there, paint it on and it will, because of the flux, migrate to the area it needs to go to. So with that mix of being able to load up the iron, having the solder stick to the iron, using the flux which will uh, draw the solder, same when you were tinning the wires here, it makes the strands kind of wick, as a term we know, uh, soak in that, that solder, and a comfortable position. Those three things and soldering is really not that uh, that difficult. Now, the first part, getting the solder to stick to the iron, that's the thing that uh, I struggle with most at first. I'd watch YouTube videos of people soldering and they're they're doing surface mount components, holding it with their thumbnail and then super precise stuff. And um, I couldn't, for the life of me, get the solder to stick to the iron, so I'd be holding the solder against the piece, now the piece is moving, and then it, it was it a, a nightmare. Um, the main reason solder won't stick to your iron, note, notice how shiny the tip of this one is, um, is if there's debris or dirt or buildup of some sort, and then the, uh, the solder can't stick to the uh, iron. Um, now you can Google for, you know, how do I fix my iron? Why isn't solder sticking? And you'll, um, everyone will say, oh, make sure you use a sponge or one of these brass uh, um, scouring pads here. And yes, but these things will mostly keep your tip in good shape. If it's so far gone that it's not sticking, I wasn't able to just using the sponge or um, the brass pad to, to get the tip back to a pristine condition where the, the solder would stick. And so I'm going to propose here some more drastic measures. Now the easiest, of course, is to buy a new tip. Um, they're not terribly expensive, but that's not always the, the fastest solution. And quite frankly, um, it's easy to fix, so we'll see. Um, so if solder is not sticking to your iron, we absolutely need to fix that first. So what worked for me and every once in a while, after a couple weeks of usage, it'll start not sticking again. Here's what I do. The um, type of flux they use for um, copper pipes. Um, you don't want to use this for electronics because it's an acid flux and it can eat away at the uh, metal after a period of time, but it's fantastic for, for this. Um, so at first I would do this. It's not sticking to your iron. It, it's a cleaning kind of flux, so just dump her in there. It'll smoke. That's fine. Then work it. I would use the uh, brass scouring pad because it will really, um, almost like a, a sandpaper, and really clean your iron. And then try again. I don't know if you can look and see how fantastic that looks now. It's even better than it was. And when it's clean and in proper shape, solder will stick to the uh, iron there. You may need to do it a few times. At first, still no good. Dunk her in there again, really give her hell. Clean her up. If that doesn't work, if, if the tip is 
so far gone that that alone doesn't do it. That'll certainly improve it, but if you have to, and what I've had to do several times, get a piece of sandpaper, flat, and sand away that buildup and gunk that's on the uh, tip of your iron. Now, I had tried this before and it didn't work. Uh, the tip for this is, most of us would be inclined logically so to do this when the iron's cold, right? You can hold your sandpaper and really work that uh, tip there, but if you do that, the time it then takes for your iron to, to heat up, it'll pick up um, oxidation or whatever's causing the uh, solder not to tip, and then by the time it's hot enough, you try and get some solder on there and still doesn't uh, stick. So if you resort to the sandpaper technique, and people online will tell you, you go, don't do that, it'll ruin your tip. Listen, this is a, a last resort. Uh, if nothing else works, then do this, but tr try the just the brass and the flux first. Um, so if you do this, do it while the iron's hot, which is why the sandpaper's flat, and you work it around, dunk into the uh, acid flux, uh, scour in the brass pad, and then again load up and you should be able to get the solder to stick to your iron there. Um, another part of iron care, when you're done you put the iron away, it's good to keep some solder on there. Um, it'll protect the tip from picking up oxidation, which will cause the, that symptom where the um, solder doesn't stick. And one thing I'll do sometimes, instead of using the nice uh, thin electronic solder there, I'll, I've got a spool of, again, this is the stuff they use for copper pipes, and before putting, putting it away, now it's really nice and clean, and, and there is a coat on there because it's so shiny, but um, what you can do before putting it away, again, dunk, and then just coat the hell out of it. A little wipe. Beautiful. Turn your iron off. And that'll preserve the tip. And if all of that fails, then get a new tip. Serious, don't uh, bother attempting to do this, you'll drive yourself crazy if you can't get solder to stick to the uh, to your iron. Um, now to prove this point again of how easy it is and should be, uh, let's do a few things that are vapor related. I have a uh, the ground side of a 510 connector here. So same three things one tiny bit of flux onto the area we want to solder to. Flux again. We're going to tin our wire and I'm going to bring up another point here on why it's important to tin everything. Our iron's in good shape. I'm going to load up the iron. Solder sticks to it. Solder's at that temperature it needs to be, thus I don't need to leave it on the part for too long. The flux that's on there is sucking it into all those strands. I'm going to tin the area on the 510 connector here as well. Make sure I'm in a comfortable position, my hands resting. And the reason it's so important to tin everything is this. The solder melts at somewhat of a lower temperature than uh, the other metal it's uh, sticking to. Um, so we have solder on this part. Uh, we have solder on this part. I'm now going to load up some more solder. In fact, before I do, let me figure out my position here. Figure out your comfortable comfortable position before you bother. I'm gonna come at it this way. 
So I've got solder on here, solder on here, now there's solder on here. And I mentioned in my videos, we're going solder to solder. This solder is liquid hot. As soon as it touches the other solder, it's going to get liquid hot. And it really doesn't need to be on there very long. And all that solder fuses together. We've got a nice joint there. Easy as that. Um, that's those are the things, guys. If you first, you need to make sure your iron's in good shape. You get solder sticking to the tip. Uh, some flux. Tin everything. Uh, use flux before applying the solder in the tinning of your wire and then the component. Comfortable, comfortable position. Get one of these helping hands if, uh, in some cases, if you have to, that can uh, really help. Take your time figuring out how you're going to place your component. Can I come at it this way? No, this is in the way, right? Load up. Everything's tin, solder to solder. Paint it on there. And all of a sudden, soldering isn't that hard. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to add comments in the uh, post here. And thanks everyone for uh, for watching.